let's talk about something more jujitsu related. Say, uh, hey, I hear Robert Dreisel is making a movie. Yeah, I think it's called Close Guard. What are, you, what are your thoughts on uh, that? Oh man, I highly recommend everyone to uh, uh, to get out there and check out this this information that's being put out by Robert Drysdale, Professor Robert Drysdale. He's been working on this project for a long time, and I've been following it like closely. Uh, he's got plenty of uh, uh, podcasts that, he, that he's been in on YouTube where he discusses the reason behind doing the movie um, and, you know, why he's doing the movie, what the movie entails. It's just, I can't wait. So just to kind of give you the gist of it, as far as I know. So it, it's a movie. It, it's called Close Guard, the movie. Uh, it's got an, they have an Instagram account. I believe they have a Facebook account. So it's called Closed Guard, the movie. And it's going to go into the history of jiu-jitsu. Uh, how it started, you know, how the whole started in Japan, how it went to the world, how it got to Brazil, who are the real influential people. And and there's, it's based on a lot of uh, of research that they put in, both in Japan and Brazil. And, and so... I can't wait because here's the thing, listening to him and what he's saying and some of the stuff that I've listened to and I've, I've listened to this other uh, 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 YouTube channel that's going over like official Brazilian Jiu Jitsu history. And uh, let's just say that there's been a narrative built uh, around the Gracie family but that narrative is not 100% accurate. Mm. It's basically, you know, the, the, the way I look at it is like the victorious get to write history. But that's not, that's not necessarily the true history, right? So I think it's going to surprise a lot of people as to, you know, who's really responsible for bringing jiu-jitsu to Brazil and everybody believes it was Maeda. Yes, he had uh, uh, definitely a part to play in it, but the truth is he wasn't the major person that brought Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu to Brazil. Like when he got to Brazil, he was already retired from fighting. He wasn't really interested in teaching that much. There's no proof that he actually taught Carlos Gracie. So Whoa. there's there's a lot of they they have a it's it's really interesting and 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 uh it's crazy how like don't get me wrong because i feel i feel bad for for professor Drysdale because he gets hate hate he gets hate from both sides he gets hate from the gracie family and then he gets hate from from uh the the like from both brazilians and americans because he's actually half he's half brazilian half american right and uh but he 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 doesn't say that the Gracie family has no validity in the history. They do. They have a very That's strong validity in the history of Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. But the narrative that they are selling or saying is not a hundred percent accurate, right? So it's very very interesting. I think it's gonna open everyone's eyes to to a, a different. Uh, uh, outlook as to how you know jiu-jitsu how jiu-jitsu brazilian jiu-jitsu became brazilian jiu-jitsu so it's it's really exciting i can't wait uh take my money professor drysdale i am getting it i am so in i can't wait it's supposed to come out this summer um yeah so if you want a little bit more information on that uh just you know uh, look for uh, Close Guard the movie. Uh, Close Guard the movie. The Instagram handle is Close Guard Film at Close Guard Film uh, on Instagram. Uh, James has a question here. What are your takes on Robert Dreisel's statement that you find any BJJ techniques in old Kosa and Judo books? <laughs> he's actually quite accurate. What? He's ac yeah, he's accurate on that. In that. Yeah, I've seen a bunch of stuff, and there's a lot of things that are that guys are doing today that 
like De La Hiva and even like a semi variation of Beating Bolo is in there. Uh, okay. Like slight variation of X Guard. Like there's a lot of similarities, if not I like identical moves being done in Kosen Judo. Uh, and the reason why I guess, yeah, you know, I don't want to ruin the the whole aspect of the movie or what they're gonna go into. But basically, the, the, you know, when when Higuro Kano, the founder of Judo, founded Judo, there was a lot of things about Judo he didn't like, and one of those things was groundwork. You know, he felt like it was ungentlemanly. It wasn't gentlemanly. You know, it wasn't a gentlemanly thing to do. So they focused more on the stand-up. And because he was so influential, pretty much, you know, jiu-jitsu or kosen judo, the, all of that groundwork kind of got lost. Uh, right? And so, But it created a vacuum that the Brazilians and the Gracie family took advantage of. Right? But they didn't really n know any of this stuff. Like the Gracie family didn't really know uh, like all of the cold sand judo stuff. But what happens is, okay, because they decided to just focus on the groundwork, right? You now have the same abilities as if, you know, where, where the Japanese came up with all the ideas in cold sand judo. Well, through the last 30, 40, 50 years, the Brazilians came up with the same things and, you know, and so on and so on, right? So it created a vacuum for a resurgence of groundwork. Take the information, repackage it, rebrand it. Uh, no, not taking it, just refinding it, right? Because they weren't taught all these things by the Japanese. They were taught judo, like takedowns and the self-defense was a big thing, uh, you know, th that was predominantly, you know, brought by Japanese so they had the original Gracie Jiu Jitsu was like 36 lessons and they were just predominantly self-defense moves. But when eventually they formed the federation and they didn't want to, again, like I said, they didn't, they didn't want to do what judo was doing. They, they wanted to differentiate themselves from judo. So they focused more on the groundwork. And that again, created a vacuum where they just almost refound what is very similar, if not the same as Kosei and judo. Mm, okay. Right? okay. So it's it's really um, cool. Again, I'm just uh, okay, again I'm yeah. just regurgitating what Professor Ry uh, Drysdale has been talking about. I'm sure again, if you want to get a more clear, concise uh, idea about this film and what's it about, I highly recommend looking Professor Drysdale up. If not, just anything to, having to do with uh, Close Guard the film or Close Guard the movie. Now, okay, so my experience with Robert Drysdale in person, just to see him in seminars, and this goes like years back, like I'm talking like five, mm -hmm. 2015, 20, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, he seems, he's very, he's been very deliberately outspoken about the Gracies. And uh, I, again, I, I, I like I like his work. I like what he's done. I like his resume. It's like a big, I'm actually, I'm a huge fan. But he's very outspoken about, about talking. I, if I'm going to use his words about like how, like the, it's the Grace family, it's a lot of marketing. This 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 film I'm I'm he's a no, very, no, he's very that, academic individual. He's not wrong, but like, but, but I guess but, the, but the, the things you see. He doesn't you want to this. He's not. But the things fair. A lot of people f have different feelings about the Gracie family and what they mean mm -hmm. to or what they. To me, they have an, and and I think he would agree. They have an an am amazing part in this history, and they should be given credit for many, many things, right? Uh, and we are literally all here speaking right now because of the Gracie family, right? If it wasn't for the Gracie family, we would not be doing Jiu Jitsu as it is today. So you gotta give credit what credit is due and you gotta be great, grateful for the Gracie family and what they've done. But there's, of course, there's, there's not, not everything is black and white there's pros and cons the family has also been known to have done some things that you know and a lot of it is the the the, the way they presented jujitsu in a way that would benefit the family mm -hmm. right you know such as by saying that carlos learned from maeda and had a, this and that right but again there's no actual factual proof that he did there's more proof that he trained with students of Maeda, right? So 
again, it's just small little things, small manipulations of the history to benefit the family. And uh, I mean, there's no wrong, right or wrong in that. It just it is what it is. I so guess, uh, again, like I am, I'm, I'm insanely grateful for the Gracie family. I'm, you know, I'm, we wouldn't be here. We that. wouldn't be here for the, if, without them. You know, and they have, just, yeah. but the whole family has, they have good entities and they have bad entities. They have good people and they have shitty people. Like that's, every family is like that. What I'm taking away from this is like, he's kind of offering like a little, like the Gracie family is obviously like going to be biased in the sense that like they have an agenda and it's not necessarily like a bad agenda. It's like they're just doing what's best for them. I guess we, this, this documentary is kind of, I guess, uh, giving a bit more of a neutral take, a third party take on like what really, what yes, really works exactly. Out. Yeah. So that's exactly. actually really that's gonna be really no, but the whole movie the, listen, but the right whole now. movie is based on because there's been like yeah. books written or but it's all like word of mouth. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. This film, as far as I'm concerned, is like he wants it's based on research. An academic uh, news, approach. Yeah, yes. So a lot of magazine articles, newspaper articles, right, of the times, uh, going to Japan and the Kodokan, and they have, they have meticulous records, right? So it, it's all based on research, academia, right? Uh, it's not, you know, just a family member giving their story or so, but however, he does, he does do a lot of interviews as well with these masters and people that were there during those times you know the early times so he did a lot of interviews as well with a lot of different people including some of the members of the gracie family i believe so it, I, I can't wait i think it's important you know I, one thing i realize now when when i've during this time that we've been at home and, and kind of looking at things and having more times with ourselves is that I don't like where Jiu Jitsu is going with some of these, um, you know, this this old school, no old school, new school, where the 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 older generation, like all oh, the new generation, doesn't know anything about self defense, doesn't they can't defend themselves on the street or a real fight, and then of course we have the new school going, hey, we're we're so good and gifted and 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 technical and our there's so much evolution of the sport that we would kick your ass and rolling. Right, we'd beat all you up and rolling, right? And they're both right, <laughs> you know. They're both they're both right. That's the funny thing, you know. Uh, and, and the thing is, we need to get past this nonsense. Like jujitsu, jujitsu is all encompassing. It's supposed to have self defense. It's supposed to have uh, an evolution of the sport. Uh, and I don't like some of again. It's it's both parties' faults. You know, both the old school people and the new school. But I think that uh, one thing that I think should be done is like, guys, that, let's not forget those who paved the way. You know what I mean? Like, let's let's show some love to those who came before, because without them, you know, uh, you know, we wouldn't be here and doing what we're doing. You know what I'm saying? Um, so I mean. I think that, you know, there was a quote, I don't, I don't know how to do it properly, but someone said that, you know, we, we are here because we stood on the shoulders of giants, right? So mm -hmm. I think that that's important to do. I think this, it's important to have respect both ways. I think that we should um, respect those, respect, yeah, give credit where credit is due and respect those who came before. And the older generation needs need to understand and admire and appreciate the talent that is the youth and what they bring to the table, and, and that's that's the, that's the way I that's how I feel. So that's how so I feel. Just, just going scrolling through the Instagram account right now on my laptop, it looks like he's trying to just give due credit to like uh, all, honestly a lot of people that I don't even know the names of faces of right now. And, yeah, and it's it's mostly like said, a lot of academic sources. Yeah, it's mostly like there's definitely mostly like Japanese and Brazilians you know, is where I guess the whole story is going to be centered around. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, right. it's, uh, it's kind of cool to see like ABCC champion kind of devi like deviate as opposed to just like, open well, he actually does has done all these things as opposed to just being a professional fighter and opening a gym. Like he's to be an executive producer on something that looks actually well shot with like proper cinematographer, proper direction, proper research. 
This is cost uh, money. <laughs> will, cost is, money. Is he, will he, they're hoping to make something special here, so it's like uh, I'm excited too. I'm a fan, and like he's got well, this buzz. But we got yeah. he's got people in Canada talking about it, like just like we're going out. <laughs> You're welcome. You're welcome, Robert Drysdale. <laughs> Maybe we should like tag him on this video. <laughs> oh, 100%. 100%. You know what the thumbnail of this is going to be. <laughs> like, <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, looking, no. I'm looking forward to it. I'm excited. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm all in on that one. Should be good. Uh, I think it's important. Like his, I love, I'm, I, I guess that I should be a little bit more clear about the fact that I, I love history. I love history. I'm a history buff. Like I love, you know, uh, hearing about, but then again, I guess it's that warrior mentality or that historical warrior vibe, like the, the samurai, the knights, the Mongols, like, you know what I mean? Like the emperors of Rome. And so like, I'm, I love that history stuff. I'm just a huge buff. And just to, to have like a really cool, uh, you know, history of jiu-jitsu going way back with a more concise clear you know path I, i'm so excited for it you know I, I really am i was gonna say professor i'm taken aback by your like uh the general knowledge you just pulled out on the history of the jiu-jitsu in itself it's like i'm not oh it's, it's clear you're, you're yeah yeah you're, um you i like it. what J clear. sorry i like what james says here and yeah it's great yes so he does talk a lot about how the influence of no gi comes mostly from the catch as can wrestling uh mm -hmm. You know, and we all know this he's gonna go more into the to the influence of like the Japanese and, and Europeans and Americans and how they kinda ended up working together, uh and like exchanging ideas and and, and, and they, because of the, the prize fighting that they were doing at the time. Uh so yeah, there's definitely a huge catch as catch wrestling influence in BJJ, you know, when it comes to the more of the no gi vibe and things like that. So or right, even James, even 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 in the MMA realm as well, because remember when the whole Gracie family thing was about the, it was self defense in MMA. It wasn't so much what you know in the, in the fifties and sixties. It was like self defense in MMA. It wasn't so much what we do today, like as a sport. That came after. That came later. Uh, yeah. James, you're doing a good job hyping this movie up for me. You're like, like this is like this is legit good buzz. I'm like, well, I'm I really was actually touching catch, catch wrestling too. Like, this is that's actually really cool for me. Like, I, uh, yeah, it's 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 fascinating. I love it. I think it's great. It's refreshing to have like a a different like approach, or you know what I mean, or a more uh, researched approach, right? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. actually, no, the truth is, like, there's again, like I said, there's another there's another channel. Uh, by uh, uh, Master Bering's son, uh, Ian Bering. And every weekend, uh, from episode one, I think, till about episode 12, he had like five people on there or four people on there on his channel every week where they discussed the history of Jiu-Jitsu. Mm. And I think a lot of what they go through or they discuss is what, you know, Robert Drysdale kind of, I think he, he also, a few of those guys on the panel are guys I think that contributed to the film as well. And it's crazy. Like it's fascinating. And again, I, but unfortunately it's all in Portuguese. Um, they don't, they don't so, at that point. yeah, unless they, they do some kind of closed captioning, which it's, I think it would be hard to do uh, because it's usually uh, more, it's a kind of like a, a zoom type you know uh video mm -hmm. so um yeah but it, i listened to all the episodes they're about an hour or so long maybe more and it's it's fascinating there's so many interesting things that they talk about all the way from like you know japan all the way to brazil and it's it's really cool so between that those videos that i was watching and now robert drysdale's film and, and and you know and he's done a few interviews in portuguese too he speaks very fluent in portuguese and i've listened to those as well and they, they've been great so i've learned a lot i've learned a lot about the history of jiu-jitsu it's been really amazing it's really cool seeing uh, jiu-jitsu kind of hit like pop culture point like i mean it's been doing that for about the past decade but like we're at the fact that there's a full-on movie about the history of it like like that seems very formalized mm -hmm. and uh, like it's it's cool to see this kind of these kind of resources coming out. It's not just about like the cool sport mm -hmm. who's the best grappler. 
Rivers. Well, I, like I, people touch on the roots. I, I also I think that I've always said that if, what while it may not be a documentary, I don't think it'll be a documentary, but I think a real move like a, a, a entertaining movie mm-hmm. is what's gonna bring jiu jitsu more and more and more to the masses. Because remember what martial arts did for. Uh, movies did in the 80s and 90s you know like for people getting into martial arts you know the the van dams the seagulls the the you know the the chuck norris's and you know all these and many many other action stars that brought martial arts to the screen bruce lee of course the original you know god of martial arts movies uh so i think that uh we need something like that for jiu-jitsu now i know there's two things in the works um they're gonna do i know that the, the the very famous brazilian guy that did narcos i forget his name right now jose padilla i think his name is i could be wrong don't i'm sorry i know he's trying to do a movie on uh, netflix and it's going to do like it's going to be half and half it's going to be like maeda and then it's going to be hicks and gracie right. right okay I see. so but it's a movie like a bio not a biopic but like you know a film. There'll be a film. It's, it's not, there's like some, not, there's some uh, artistic artistic license and how they. Yeah, it. yeah, exactly. Of course, it has to be entertaining and all this other stuff, right? So it may not be a hundred percent factual, uh, but I also, I yes, an in interpretation. And I believe that Hori and Gracie is also working on something where they gonna might do a film on his life, you know. Or he's one of the he's, he's one you know, of the how, Gracies that you don't know about. Like he 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 was he was a big deal about the UFC one, right? If I remember correctly. Well, no, he he was one of the main reasons why UFC started, and he was involved with UFC until UFC five. Got you. And then after that, he didn't like the way that the, it, the direction was going. So he, he, he's like, no, I don't like the, the way this... Because, you know, he was, they were very against time limits and stuff like that. So it doesn't uh, work. It, it wouldn't work for a pay-per-view format. And he, he... So once they started to change the rules too much, he's like, okay, that's not true, like, one-on-one. You know, true, best guy... Worst, yeah. yeah, best guy wins or whatever it is. Well, he just, they knew, they understood that once you start to put time limits in, then that goes against jujitsu and it, it, it puts jujitsu kind of in a tough situation because yeah. especially when you have no weight classes and you know what I mean? Because a smaller guy will might need to cook the bigger guy a little bit longer, you know what I mean? And stall and it's, beat, it'll be yeah. boring, you know, it's so if for action and for the sport to where it is today, they needed to make changes and rules. So Horian didn't like that idea. So he, he um, sold his shares or whatever it is that he had in the cashed in, out. He cashed out. He cashed out. That's okay. We can after, say it. <laughs> he cashed out after UFC five, I think. But he's, yeah. he's like the absolute main reason why UFC started is Horian Grace. Do you, do you have any resources or like um, things that you recommend like, for people that are more interested about the ju- history of jujitsu, like the early UFCs, like that, along that kind of subject? Do you have any recommendations uh, for literature? Literature? Literature, Not, video I don't, content. I don't think, I don't think there's. Well, I'm sure if you if you uh, go on YouTube or whatever and you put history of UFC, you're gonna you're gonna get a bunch of stuff in there, right? Uh, I'm certain. I can't remember if it's on the. I'm certain. I'm certain. Uh, was crazy. Yeah. Sorry, I'm cer- I'm certain you'll you'll uh, you'll just if you type history of anything on YouTube, it's gonna come. Stuff is gonna come up. Uh, even like if you put history of Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, you're gonna get a ton of stuff on there. But it's gonna be predominantly, unfortunately, like her not her say, but like the Gracie family talking about their version of the history, right? Yeah, I remember like why well, oh like the I think the worst case I remember was uh I think Metamorphs th- two or three with uh it was actually this is the one I actually really liked uh, was uh Bravo versus Gracie two, uh and then like uh I, I think it was pretty I don't know my take on that was uh Eddie Eddie messed Toiler up even though like he didn't win by regulation rules like it was, mm-hmm. it was a draw but like but then like they span it as in like oh he he met the Gracie filter where like he didn't tap they they, they, mm-hmm. went, they went to a draw well definitely I I, I, man uh, Hoyler. You know, Master Hoyler is definitely a tough guy. I don't see him tapping. I, I think I see him allowing his knee to blow out before he taps. Um, but I, as far as like if you 
if you look at it as as a you know a bit by bit piece by piece frame by frame definitely Eddie Bravo got the best of that no doubt about that uh, um, yeah. but well, but as far as like what, what but the, as far as like what were the rules well the rules say is if it goes the distance is a draw so like you know what I'm saying like so that's all you can say that's if, all you, if, that's you, all if you go if you if you go with impartial impartiality right yeah, Ruth says it's a draw. It was a draw. Nobody won. But who dominated most of the match? Who controlled? Who had the better options? Right? It was definitely Eddie. No no doubt about that. So, so we're here with Matt. In, in, Matt's in introduced listen, by Hensel Gracie and John Danaher. Just that's that. Good reference. I don't know. I'm not, are, are there, is that book still is still for sale on Amazon and stuff? That's an know. old one. I think you're paying a yeah. pretty penny if you want that new. Like, yeah, it's like, that's a little collector's <laughs> item. He might, he might be the only one I know how to has it. I, think. I, I have about, I don't, I don't know, maybe 80% of all the books that came out in the early days. Like, Dude, that's like specifically, that. specifically geared towards like Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, not like, but I have a lot of them, man. <laughs> I'm not going like, I, I was actually with James. We were told, we were looking up, like, we were, like back years ago, we were like looking up the value of some of these books. Like, I think Marcelo's original X Guard book is like a couple hundred dollars now. I got that. Uh, are you kidding me, man? <laughs> We're talking after this, <laughs> dude. I got, uh, I got, not... so, I got. It's, I have an insane amount of stuff. Like I, 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 I got rid of so many things recently only because I had too much stuff. You know, well, you got. I'm a Marsh. I'm, I'm a, I'm a like, like if I'm, you know, I just said like I love history, so yeah. I kept everything, man. I kept so much magazine articles and. Books. I have a couple of those, like old school Japanese jujitsu self defense books from like the sixties. I got a, I got so much stuff, man. I got drawers and binders full of these things, and you know. Um, uh, recently, I got some some books that I, I'm like, wow, do I really need these? No, but they're not like BJJ. Anything Brazilian jiu jitsu, I've kept. But uh, yeah. Listen, I think you you, even if you don't put like don't don't put the book up online, right? That's, that defeats the purpose of like so much hard work. But like you should definitely photograph that stuff and post it and like give out give out your your like Professor Costa's top ten book list. You know, like that's actually like, I, would, I I no I want to see that. Like I mean, I remember I asked you about I, I, I just I, not a judo I, book. Unfortunately, I get what you're saying, but I think these the the whole idea of books now is just turning into collector's items. Mm. Because nobody reads anymore, man. Nobody looks at, like, when you have instructionals of the quality that we have today, why would you want a book other than to just to flip through the pages and nostalgia and, like I said, and, and collector's items? Because you can get an X-Guard instructionals or go online and find X-Guard instructionals from the man himself. I actually have his original series. Right, it's like oh, you're talking about the one where he's like he's got the afro and it's like it's yeah, I have and, like, oh, yeah, yeah. I have dude, you have no idea. I got an insane amount of BJJ information, insane. I have a few, my... I have a few terabytes worth of stuff on my hard drive. Uh, I have some original. I have like a suitcase, of a DVD suitcase of instructionals, <laughs> because right. you know uh, DVDs were like first was the VHS, then the next big thing was. The, the the DVDs and now we have you know online stream oh, online oh. streaming so I've gone through every phase man I'm, you're making me feel old dude <laughs> no dude no if anything like I'm not even asking at this point I'm coming over I'm I'm all rifle I'm all rifle through your library man like this is this sounds like this is some good stuff to like uh I got a lot of shit man we'll talk got, we'll talk yeah man. We got yeah. five minutes we got five minutes left I mean like if there's any anyone has any burning questions I know there's uh there's been a bit of a we kind of went day, down but... the, the 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 history rabbit hole, and I'm kind of happy oh, with it's that. A, it's a good topic. I, I, it's a great topic. I, I, I love this yeah. one. This is I love it, man. I just love it. I think it's uh... again. I'm gonna go back to saying that I think it's important, man. I think it's important that people know their history, and to understand the roots, and and to give credit where credit is due. And I don't think. Uh, I don't know what is what it is. Maybe us as a North American society, or you know, we don't do that as much as we should. I think. Like well, I think there's so really many there's so many. I think people training jujitsu, uh, the younger generation training jujitsu, 
Yeah, they understand the whole okay, Gracie family. But as far as like lineage and you know what is what is the true you know like what is the history of jujitsu? How did, did it happen? Like most people don't even understand that the reason why we do jujitsu is because of UFC or the first UFCs, right? So uh, there's so much to learn. It's such an interesting, deep with so many layers history and and with so many interesting characters and, and people and yeah, you can go hours and like I said, hours and hours and hours and hours of information about, you know, our beautiful art. So I, I highly recommend everyone, everyone that puts on a gi and, and trains Brazilian Jiu Jitsu should do the right thing and, and look up at the the history. So this film I think is great, right? Cause I mean, it might be one of those um, bridges right like that you know that kind of uh helps with that connection with between the the, the younger generation and the older generation and in in both appreciating jujitsu so it'll be good i think so i just uh just the thought came to mind i think uh if i have a recommendation for any like uh historical pieces actually i think uh, the, ch the choke documentary on hicks and grace and that hicks and yeah grace, that's a classic that's, all, one. that's a fun one that's a, a fun one, one to watch on yeah well, it's, you, you, well, it's, it's Yuki Nakai. I have right? that on VHS, man. <laughs> oh, you actually have the original VHS? I think so. I oh. gotta. I, I don't. Don't quote me on that. I gotta ch double check. I got way too much shit. I don't know what I have. No, I think I have DVD. Please, please I have don't the, tell I me have like the you DVD. actually. You actually saw the release, like people, were like, hey, this is a new DVD coming out. Here's the commercial. Like, did, yep. did you actually see that? Yeah, yeah. Damn, I just, I, cause I only know that. I only know that documentary as like it's a free YouTube video. <laughs> 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 no that was a thing for us to buy there's a few there were so many like there's a few came out of out of brazil like dengue fever and then there's uh the zen machine which was about mario sperry these are all like oh, small cool. small documentaries and stuff like that yeah there's a whole bunch more that i'm in that that i have that are very cool and and interesting to to watch but it's very interesting to see the way they shot those back then because it's very yeah. clear if you watch Choke, they didn't expect uh, that's Yuki Nakai, right? I'm like, I'm not mixing yeah. up Japanese. Like, yeah, it's, they didn't expect Yuki Nakai to win. They were following two completely different people the entire time. And I, it's only towards the end you really see like they focus on him now. It's like, yeah. I thought that was I very feel interesting. So, oh, we got one minute left. So, oh, no, no, we're not yet. Not yet. We started a little bit that's, late. So we have about three minutes left. So, I'm yeah, I feel so, so bad for Yuki Nakai, man, because. Man, that what's his name, Gerard Gordeau, whatever, just crashed Blinds out him. his eyeballs. The guy's like practically blind now because of that fight. That's insane, man. You know what the I mean? Of Hickson too. Well, not the, he didn't go the distance. He made it to the finals with Hickson too, right? So yeah, but it really goes to show. You know what? He's one. The funny thing is about Yuki Nakai. He's one of the main figureheads of IBJJF Japan. Like he oh, became. Yeah hugely involved i think he's a gracie baja representative or he was i'm not sure if he still is so he he's got a he's he went all in after he lost to hickson with brazilian jiu-jitsu and became a big big proponent of it and supporter and you know and, it's and very uh, clear he's a big so, deal like yeah, yeah yeah definitely like, I, Mad respect. Up, I remember seeing him as this, and he's a, I saw him on quintet and like, he's a little a, guy like, too he's tiny man he's a small guy <laughs> Yeah, but I didn't realize he was. Uh, IBJ, it's like strictly part of the IBJJF. That's actually. I, ha I have that uh, one too, man. Art Suave. James is saying Art Suave is a cool one, more focusing on the sport aspect of BJJ. Yep, I got that one as well, man. I'm gonna check that out, dude. I, I, I'm, I, I fixate like whenever there's something new that's coming out, I I gotta have it. I'm one of those guys like I gotta have it. You know, I fixate on it, and until it's in my hands, I like thinking about it. <laughs> you know, gotta watch it. I see what's going on. No, I know it's. Appreciate it, man. Like that's uh, that's you gotta keep the culture alive. Gotta remember your roots, right? So yeah, you got one minute. Anybody want to chime in anything here? Hey, James, man, thank you so much for the contribution today, brother. Mm -hmm. Like you kind of oh, kept the conversation, topic. you kept the conversation going, and you brought up some good points, and I appreciate that, man. Miss you, brother. Anybody Otherwise, else want to say anything? Forty seconds. So I don't know guys, who I'm gonna have on Thursday yet. Uh, so please share, please subscribe, join us on Thursday. 
Check out the YouTube channels. All that good stuff. Coffee with Costa. B Grapple. Hey. Thank you to my sponsors. I know I don't say this enough. They're so good to me. Uh, Fighters Market Canada, Maeda Canada. You guys are amazing. Thank you, Jeff Santos. Oh, 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 oh,